Hello friends, welcome to the Pathology Insights. Today in this video, we will be discussing about the risk factors of the atherosclerosis. Uh, what exactly is atherosclerosis? It means that there is a thickening and hardening of the vessels. Usually it occurs in the medium sized vessels. And this word atherosclerosis, it is derived from the Greek word. That means ather in the Greek, it means gruel, uh, soft because of the accumulation of the lipids and sclerosis means hardening. So in the atherosclerosis, we have uh, a lesion called atheroma where we have the central accumulation of a lipid core will be present, which is soft. And then we have a fibrous cap on it, which is firm. So later on calcifications can also occur. That's why they called it as an uh, atherosclerosis because we have a central soft core which means ether as they called and sclerosis means hardening and as the atheromatous plaque as this lesion is increasing in the size it causes obstruction to the lumen this is one of the consequences other consequences is as it is growing there can be ulceration of the surface endothelium and there can be exposure of this lipid core so that causes thrombosis again so that also can, can cause the obstruction and the third one is as this is growing it can weaken the vessel wall so the vessel dilates and that leads to the aneurysms so these are the consequences of the atherosclerosis now when we see the risk factors for the atherosclerosis they have been um, mainly classified as non-modifiable risk factors modifiable risk factors and additional risk factors now we'll see what are the conditions under non-modifiable. So as the name suggests, non-modifiable means we cannot change them. So in that we have age, gender and genetic factors. These three things we cannot change. So they have kept as a non-modifiable. As the age increases, the risk for the development of the atherosclerosis increases. Actually, the disease process, it starts at early in the life. But as the obstruction occurs, the disease starts manifesting so that manifestation occurs in the middle and the later life but the process starts at the early in the life so as the age progresses there will be the chances for the manifestation of the disease so the risk of the atherosclerosis increases and when we see the gender males are at increased risk now for the females after the menopause the risk increases before the menopause the estrogen hormone it gives a protection against the atherosclerosis now how exactly it does we doesn't know because after the menopause the women who are using uh, exogenous hormones estrogen it doesn't reduce the risk actually it increases the risk so the same estrogen hormone after the menopause is not giving the protection only before the menopause only it's giving the protection so exact uh, mechanism how it causes we doesn't know and at the older age actually after the menopause females have more risk than the men so usually when we see men have more risk after menopause females have more risk of developing the atherosclerosis now genetic factors also play a role uh, the patients who are having the family history they have increased risk along with that certain uh, factors which are the risk for the atherosclerosis like familial hypercholesterolemia hypertension diabetes these are all these things run in the families and these are the main risk factors for the development of the atherosclerosis. So these are the three non-modifiable risk factors for the atherosclerosis. Now when we see the modifiable risk factors, we have hypercholesterolemia, cigarette smoking, diabetes mellitus and hypertension. So when we see hypercholesterolemia, that means uh, the cholesterol we have two types, three types actually HDL. Uh, LDL and BLDL in that HDL cholesterol is helpful why it is helpful is because it transfers the cholesterol from the peripheral tissues to the liver for it to be excreted out whereas LDL cholesterol it carries the cholesterol from the liver to the peripheral tissues so it causes deposition of the cholesterol in the peripheral tissues so that's why this excess of the LDL cholesterol that it causes more damage now, when the LDL cholesterol is present in the circulation, it directly causes damage to the endothelium or otherwise this LDL cholesterol can be oxidized by the reactive oxygen species. 
and that causes even more damage to the endothelium. Actually, the basic uh, stone or uh, stepping stone for the atherosclerosis is damage to the endothelium, either the loss of the endothelium or damage to the endothelium. In that also, damage to the endothelium is more important for the development of the atherosclerosis. So, any factor which causes damage to the endothelium, the risk of the atherosclerosis increases. So, in that we have the cholesterol, excess of the cholesterol, LDL cholesterol which directly causes damage or oxidized LDL which causes the damage. Then cigarette smoking, directly the toxins from the cigarette smoke can cause damage to the endothelium and because of this there is an increase in the reactive oxygen species. These reactive oxygen species they can directly cause damage to the endothelium or they can oxidize the LDL cholesterol and this oxidized LDL again it causes damage to the endothelium. So finally the endothelial damage that leads to the atherosclerosis. Now next is the diabetes mellitus. Now in the diabetes mellitus either we have deficiency of the insulin or absence of the insulin or insulin resistance. Now the insulin uh, the function of the insulin in the adipose tissue is it actually controls the activity of this enzyme lipoprotein lipase. So there is inhibition of this enzyme. When the insulin deficiency is there or it is reduced, there is an increased activity of this enzyme in the adipose tissue lipoprotein lipase. So the uh, action of this enzyme is it causes the breakdown of the fat and there is a release of the free fatty acids into the circulation. So that's why in the diabetes mellitus we have increased levels of the free fatty acids and these free fatty acids they can directly cause damage to the endothelium. And in the hypertension, there is more stress on the vessels as there is more pressure uh, in the vessels there will be a sheer stress on the endothelial cells so that causes the endothelial damage so in this way these four modifiable conditions which causes the risk for the development of the atherosclerosis now additional risk factors we have a list of things uh, first thing is in the stress, the person has a more stress, there is more release of the reactive oxygen species and we have already seen that reactive oxygen species, they directly cause damage to the endothelium or they oxidize the LDL cholesterol and oxidized LDL cholesterol that causes damage to the endothelial cells. Then we have another condition called the metabolic syndrome. This we see in the patients with the obesity. Now in these patients, they have insulin resistance hypertension, dyslipidemia, hypercoagulability and pro-inflammatory state. So all these conditions actually they cause damage to the endothelium. As we have already seen in the insulin resistance we have release of the free fatty acids, hypertension, we have shear stress on the endothelium, dyslipidemia it can directly cause damage to the endothelium and uh, hypercoagulability also the platelet aggregates when they aggregate actually they release certain uh, in cytokines which can damage to the endothelial cells and pro-inflammatory state you in this state we have increased levels of the cytokines that cause damage to the endothelium so all the conditions which occur in this metabolic syndrome they cause damage to the endothelium next one is increased lipoprotein a so lipoprotein a is nothing but it is a type of the ldl cholesterol which is linked to the apoprotein a so obviously we have seen if there is an increase in the LDL cholesterol that will directly cause damage to the endothelium. Then lack of the exercise and the obesity, these two conditions, they cause hypercholesterolemia and hypercholesterolemia leads to the endothelial damage and the dysfunction. And the factors affecting the hemostasis like hyperfibrinogenemia. Now because of this, there is a platelet aggregation and the thrombus formation. So platelet aggregates when the platelets aggregates they are activated and they release certain factors which cause damage to the endothelium then we have a thrombus formation and once a thrombus is formed the normal mechanism of the body is it breaks down the thrombi so the breakdown products of the thrombi they cause the smooth muscle proliferation so atherosclerosis we have accumulation of uh, the lipids along with that we have proliferation of the smooth muscles also so here this is the uh, cause for the smooth muscle proliferation then in the condition called hyperhomocystinemia 
here we have increased reactive oxygen species in this condition and this uh, that causes increased oxidized LDL so that causes endothelial injury and along with that in this condition there is increased protection of the nuclear factor k beta this nuclear factor k beta is it has a mitogenic effect and causes proliferation of the smooth muscle cells so that's why in the hyperhomocysteinemia patients have increased risk of atherosclerosis and in the inflammation we have increased levels of the chemical mediators which directly cause damage to the endothelium so these are all the additional risk factors along with excess use of excess hormones which have lots of progestins they increase the risk of the atherosclerosis so uh, just to remember i have just kept one word actually they keep a uh, small sentences to remember but for me uh, i remember them by keeping the small words only so additional risk factors we have smile o3h so s stands for smoking m for metabolic syndrome i for inflammation l for lipoprotein a e for exercise o for obesity and 3h is for hemostasis or hyperfibrinogenemia homocysteinemia and hormones so these are the additional risk factors which causes the atherosclerosis to see this to summarize what were the risk factors we have non modifiable which has increasing age gender and genetic factors when we see modifiable we have hyperlipidemia hypertension cigarette smoking and diabetes mellitus and in the additional risk factors we have stress metabolic syndrome inflammation increased levels of the lipoprotein a lack of exercise obesity hyperhomocysteinemia factors affecting hemostasis and use of exogenous hormones so this completes the risk factors for the atherosclerosis thank you friends uh, i'll be discussing about the pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis in my next video thank you for listening patiently